It's time to get your YouTube right. Hey, Power Director peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love. You know, the Power Director love you're looking for from Power Director University. Today, we're going to be doing a tutorial on the best render settings for YouTube using Power Director 16. Let me know in the comment section below if you have different settings that you use for YouTube, and if so, what's the quality like? Let's jump into the software and make it happen. Here we are on YouTube Help. Before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. Let's get renderific. Luckily, YouTube helps us out by giving us all the info we need to know in order to have the best quality for uploading videos to YouTube. So I'm going to include the link to this page in the video description because I know you're going to want to check it out. Now, you'll need to know what resolution and frame rate you plan to produce your video at in order to determine some of the settings here. So if you don't know that, figure that out first, come back here. All right. Now, I want to produce my video uh, at 1080p and 24 frames per second. So I'm going to base my settings off of that information. Be sure to write down the settings you select so you have them ready when you jump back into PowerDirector. The first recommendation that YouTube makes is for us to use an MP4 container. So you can click on the setting or the drop down and you get more information on any of the settings that are listed here. If you want more info about the MP4 container, go here. Not really much that I need to talk about, so I'm moving on, baby. I'm moving on. Next thing that we got listed on here is our audio codec. Now, YouTube recommends using audio codec AAC-LC. Now, you can have it in stereo or stereo plus 5.1, and your sample rate should be 96 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz. Easy peasy lemon squeezy straightforward so far. Thanks for helping us out YouTube help So then we got our video codec as you can see here YouTube recommends using h.264 now As you can see when I click on that drop down YouTube offers specific options if your editor allows you to select them now some of those things that we want to select on uh, power director is going to be progressive uh, the high profile, things like that. And you'll see that when I jump into Power Director. But you can choose between progressive and interlaced, um, variable or constant bit rate. And if you can choose between those different things on your program, then YouTube gives you the recommendation for what you should use for those settings as well. After the video codec, then we have frame rates. For best results, you can choose between 24, 25, 30, 48, 50, and 60 frames per second. But you could use other frame rates as well. But the ones that YouTube recommends are all the way up to 60 frames per second. And next you got your bit rate. So underneath this section, you have a bunch of recommendations. You got recommendations for standard dynamic range and recommendations for high dynamic range and then you also have recommendations for your audio bit rates you select the appropriate bit rate based on your resolution and frame rate so for me as i stated earlier i'm going to do uh 1080p 24 frames per second so i use this and i say okay 1080p and then to the right of this i get to choose what my bit rate is so i'm going to do 24 as far as my uh frames per second so I would go right here, which is eight megabits per second. For Power Director, that's 8,000 kilobits per second. And last but not least, we have resolution and aspect ratio. As you can see here, 
YouTube recommends a 16 by 9 and then it makes you aware that if you select a smaller aspect ratio, you'll end up with black bars on the screen. Yada, yada, yada. We should know about that. If we don't know about that type of stuff, then, you know, we need to just do a little bit more research on our resolution and aspect ratio. You can look that stuff up on YouTube if you need more help with that. So now that we know what YouTube recommends, let's jump into Power Director and see what options we have for rendering with the best YouTube settings. Here we are in Power Director. Now you see I got some clips down in my timeline. Let's just pretend I did my editing thing. And once you're done with your project and you did all your editing, what you want to do first is click on the Produce tab. Now you can upload videos to YouTube using the standard 2D tab or the online tab. I'm going to select the standard 2D tab first. Based on the recommendations from YouTube, I'll select H.264 AVC as my codec. Next, I'll go down to file extension and under file extension, I'll make sure that MP4 is selected because that is what YouTube recommends as well. Now I'm going to select a profile and I want to select one that matches the resolution and frame rate that I want my video to be. So for this one, I have 1920 by 1080 24p. So I'm going to select that one. If you're looking for a higher frame rate that doesn't exist with like 1080, just select a lower frame rate for now and we'll fix that later. Okay. Don't worry. I got your back. If you want to, you can review the details of the settings for the video here. So I want to create my own custom profile to make sure that I can adjust those things that need to be adjusted. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on this little plus sign here to create a custom profile. And I will name my custom profile YouTube. And then for the description, I'll just put something like a uh, YouTube custom profile or blah, 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 whatever. Now looking over the properties, we can see some of the information that we saw within the details. And a lot of this stuff is already dialed into where it needs to be. So that's great. We got, oh, the frame types already on progressive, the profile file type, or the profile type is already high profile. The entropy encoding or coding is already C-A-B-A-C. -A -A Man, we're already dialed in on a lot of this. It's going to be real easy to do. But there are things that I want to change. So I'm going to come up here to the video tab and I'm going to click on that. So as I stated earlier, based on the YouTube recommendations, we know that the resolution and the frame rate are good. But this is where I could change that frame rate. So if I went to a uh, profile and I selected a resolution that I like, but it didn't have a high enough frame rate, I could go here and I can select higher frame rates. If I'm going to be producing this video at a higher frame rate, I could choose those here. I'm going to leave it at 23.976. And in most cases, the frame type, the profile type, and even the entropy coding won't need to be changed. Uh, progressive, high profile, and CA. BAC are good to go. Now the average bit rate for the video is too high. So right now it's at 15,500 and I need to change that to match the YouTube setting. So YouTube said that eight megabits per second is good. So that's 8,000 kilobits per second. Now this won't cause a, a noticeable decrease in the quality of the video and it helps by reducing the video file size. So I recommend going with what YouTube recommends here. Even if your camera or your camcorder or whatever your video recording device, even if it records at a higher bit rate, I know that that's higher quality, but in this case, you don't need it. Dial it back down to what YouTube recommends. Next, we'll jump down to the advanced section. And in this section, I'm going to leave this on quality mode. This will cause it to take a little bit longer to render, but the quality will be better. Now, if you want the video to be rendered faster and you're willing to sacrifice quality, you can select speed mode if you wish to do so. So next, I'm going to leave 
USD blocking checked. Uh, this is a video filter that's used to improve visual quality. It smooths out the sharp edges uh, that are sometimes caused during encoding. And then I'm gonna go ahead and check use dynamic GOP. Now GOP is basically a collection of successive pictures within a coded video stream. So video is made up of a bunch of pictures. So this is what GOP is. Now dynamic GOP allows the decoder to improve compression based on how the pictures are arranged throughout that video stream. So I'll leave that checked. The next thing I wanna do is go to the audio tab. Now, based on the YouTube recommendation that we saw earlier, the auto compression is already on AAC, so we're good. Audio channel is on stereo, so we're good there. And the audio compression rate is at 384 kilobits per second, so we're good there as well. You can change any of these based on your needs and the settings that you wrote down for what you needed to have from that recommended uh, YouTube encoding page. So now we just click on OK. And as you can see, the profile name changed to the profile that we just created. Now, we're all set on this side of the page. If you wanna do any of these other settings, please feel free to do so. But for the purposes of this video, the next thing that we really need to do is select an export folder. So this is the location on your computer where this file will be saved. So you click on this and you can navigate to your desktop or any other folder where you want to save this video. If you don't select this, it's gonna just put it in a default location and you might not know where it is. So make sure that you select that to choose where you want to save the exported video so that you know where it is and you can grab it later because using this method, you have to manually upload the video to YouTube. Okay, so you have to know where the file is so that you can manually upload it, uh, put it on your phone, do whatever you wanna do with the file. So once you select that location, you just click on start and then it starts to uh, export, render your video for you to be able to use it later on YouTube. So next I'm gonna show you option two, which is using the online tab. So I'm gonna click on online And then I'll make sure that I click on YouTube. Now under the profile type, you can select the video resolution that you'd like. There's a bunch of options on here. You got standard definition, you got high definition, and then you also have your 4K options on here as well. For best results, you wanna match the resolution of the clips you used in your videos to the setting that you choose here. Now remember, rendering at a higher resolution is not gonna improve the quality of your video. If you have a standard def clip and you try to uh, render it at 4K, it's still gonna have the same quality that a standard definition clip is gonna have. So another thing you wanna remember is if you used multiple resolutions in your project, let's say you have some 1080p, some uh, 4K, some standard, you need to select the quality that you think is best based on the output that you're gonna have after the video is cropped or after letterbox are added to it, because based on what you do, it's gonna have different impacts on your video. Um, so you can do a few tests if you want to see which one's best for you and then select the one that you like best. Right now, I'm just gonna leave it here on full HD, 1920 by 1080. Under title, you wanna update the title with the information you wish to display on YouTube. So I'll just call it, uh, YouTube to what you want to do for your video is make sure you use tools like the keyword planner to help you figure out good titles for your video so that they're searchable and easier to find in YouTube. And then the next thing you want to do is fill out your video description. Once again, you want your video description to be robust and you want it to really reflect what's happening in the video so that the YouTube algorithm can usually use that information to help have some laser focus and pinpoint exactly what your video is about and display it to the right audience. So make sure that you have a robust video description. And I'm just gonna put something on here. It's pretty easy. And then you wanna add the tags for your videos. Once again, Keyword Planner is a great tool to help you determine the best tags that people are searching for on the internet for uh, 
the type of video that you're doing, make sure that you use tools like that to help you get uh, better search results. And then finally, you want to choose your video category. And then you want to click on start. So basically, it's going to tell you you need to log in, do the steps to put in your YouTube channel or your Gmail or email address and your password. It'll take you through that authorization and then it'll automatically start to upload your video to YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and click on cancel here. Now, a few quick things. Using the YouTube upload option from the online tab doesn't allow you to select the YouTube recommended settings. Unfortunately, it uploads your video to YouTube using the WMV codec rather than the H.264 codec. But it's up to you how you want to upload based on your preferences. If you want convenience and you're satisfied with the quality, then the online tab may be fine for you. If you want more control, higher quality, and don't mind taking additional steps to upload your videos to YouTube, then the standard 2D tab may be best for you. Personally, I prefer using the standard 2D tab and uploading to YouTube manually, but that's just me. You do you, boo. You do you. All right, Power Director Peeps, I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. And now I want to send a shout out to one of my subscribers, Copper City Flicks. Copper City Flicks makes short films on their YouTube channel. So if you're into watching some interesting short films and want to see some creativity, head over to their channel, check out a couple of their videos. And if you're feeling what they're dealing, make sure that you subscribe. If you subscribe to our channel and you want to get a shout out like Copper City Flicks did, head over to the video description and fill out the shout out request form. If you have a tutorial you'd like us to make, head over to the video description and fill out the tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk or you want to chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you do, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube, and that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.